I was shocked by the sheer volume of creators who struggled or are still struggling with this. I wasn't able to come up with any novel ideas. Everything just took ages. I had to fight through serious resistance for the most simple task, all while being too anxious to take a break, discounting my own physical and mental health. Wojtek's story is one of many. Time and time again, we see creators fall into the rat race called chasing the algorithm. Which social media platform is the best platform and which one you should be focusing on and why? Leaving us creatively exhausted, demotivated, and eventually burned out. Luckily, I am not in this stage yet, but I do want to arm myself for it. So this video is a little bit for me, but it's also for all of you because I want you all to succeed as creators. It's important to understand why we got here in the first place, and that is to understand the art of con creation itself. For a creator to make it, you need to dedicate a lot of time and effort into your work. It's reinventing yourself over and over again to not bore out your audience with the same videos over and over again. An audience with an unquenchable thirst for content. And then it happens, you pop. YouTube starts pushing your videos and now the work has only just started. All of a sudden you feel the pressure of thousands and if you're lucky, millions of eyeballs onto your creations. The comments, the haters, the super fans, the sponsors and the numerous opportunities. The need to push out more videos, better videos every damn time. Wake up, write, film, edit, eat, sleep, repeat. Wake up, write, film, edit, eat, sleep, repeat. Wake up, write, film, edit, edit, sleep, sleep, repeat, repeat. If you don't take matters into your own hands, you will experience burnout. So, what is burnout? It's definitely not something new, and it's definitely not something unique to creators. Imagine you're driving your car on a highway, and you notice, oh, I'm running out of fuel. But you're thinking by yourself, well, I'm just going to keep going, and then, all of a sudden, poof, your car stops working. I hope that won't happen to your car, but more importantly, I do not hope that that happens to you, your body, and your mental state, because that's what is happening with a burnout. You're exhausting your physical and emotional resources. That's Eileen, a lifelong friend, life coach, psychology student, and the perfect person to go a little bit deeper into what burnout really is. According to the sisters Nagovsky, there are three components, technical components of burnout. Emotional exhaustion means that you have been caring too much for too long, which means you're getting drained. The second one, the decreased sense of accomplishment, means that you're having a feeling of failure. You're having the perception that you're not uh, delivering results, but in fact you are, maybe not in the same way that you were doing it before, but you're still delivering results. And the last one is depersonalization which means you're checking out emotionally. Because you have been caring too much for too long, you can't take anyone else's uh, sorrows with you anymore. You're like, I'm done with this shit. You don't have space for bullshit anymore. Exactly. Now, you guys know I'm a scientist and I do wanna go a little bit deeper of what's actually happening at this instant inside of your body. So you understand why you feel the way that you do when all of this is happening. So I'm gonna try to draw this out. Don't judge, okay? It's been a while. So to understand this, let's imagine we're a few thousands of years ago back into the wild. And what would happen is you could see a lion pass by. That means that your body will respond automatically to this threat. Probably you know this as the fight or flight response. But what's actually happening is that your body is now initializing the stress cycle. So what does that mean? First of all, you see a threat, a stressor that kicks off the cycle, here being the lion. 
Secondly, stress hormones and neurotransmitters, for example, like cortisol, adrenaline, and, and noradrenaline, that's a difficult one to draw, they are released and then signal the body to respond to the threat, meaning that now your body has new resources available, energy available to run away or to fight that lion. And thirdly, hopefully you survive this encounter and the body needs to send signals again that it can relax again. What that does is that your hormones and those neurochemicals, they're now free to stabilize again, which helps the body to relax and get rid of that excess energy. Fortunately, we do not have to deal with lions anymore these days, but those lions have been replaced with other stressors like um, you need to get on time on an appointment, but, but there is a lot of traffic on the road. Or you need to get the kids out of school, get the dinner ready. So uh, let me rephrase that for us creators. The pressure to post content everywhere, all of the time. The exhaustion of coming up with new ideas on a schedule. Sponsors that expect your videos to do well all of the time. And the fear of losing those views and standing you have with the algorithm when you take a break. You are your business. If you don't do well, so won't your business. The thing is, people are getting these tasks done, but instead of releasing the stress, ending the stress cycle, um, they just go on to the next task, which means the stress is still inside of your body. It just builds up because you're going to the next task. And instead of building up, it is important to get rid of it. So to complete the cycle, we need to find a way to tell our bodies, like, chill, it, it's okay, don't do this stress thing anymore. For me, if I have to think about it, it looks like going to the sea, going to water. It means going out for a bike ride or taking the, the e-skate or the one wheel out. Or my favorite thing that I did when I was a kid, just pick up an old Pokemon game. Whatever works for you, you know, everybody is unique. Everybody has his own way to relax, to release stress. Just get to know yourself and pick the one that makes you feel good and relaxed. It's why you hear doctors say, just rest for the first weeks. First, you need to relax, you like, get away from all these stressors. Then you learn to deal with the stress that is still inside of your body. For that, there's no one-size-fits-all solution. Now, from theory to practice, these are a few things a creator can look out for to not get into that part. Let's call it the burning red flags. So for the ones who want to go a little bit more down the rabbit hole of these red flags and just really understand them, we actually recorded an in-depth segment on the latest episode of the podcast. So I'm gonna leave that in the description below. But there is another side to the coin. Opposite to burnout, we also have bore out. Burnout and bore out are actually inversely related concepts. When you're having a burnout, you're just being exhausted because you've been running out of fuel. You know, there is a lack of energy, emotional energy, cognitive energy, physical energy, any kind of energy. When we're talking about bore out, it means that you're just bored as f <laughs> You're just bored. You're not being stimulated in the way you can handle stimuli. You know, you have a lot of energy, a lot of creativity, a lot of imagination, which you can't use. You're not using the assets you have um, in order to get tasks done. In other words, you don't feel motivated anymore in your creative work or any type of work. Either way, burnout or bore out, I want to make the case for professional help. These are things you can't just research your way out of. And I know because I'm one of those people. You're stuck here because of your thinking patterns. And I truly believe someone who is trained and to understand and analyze your patterns, they can help you with that mind shift. And let's call it what it is, re-evaluation of your life. Wherever you look, self-care has been put forward as a number one solution to burnout. Well, self-care is not a quick fix. There is no quick fix for burnout. It can help to prevent burnout. It is actually a key component of preventing burnout. But once you have the burnout, well, good luck with that. You know, first thing you need to do is get out of your workplace. 
don't be confronted with work anymore. You need to get those stressors, those external stressors away. Because if you're not doing that, you're just keep being confronted with the same thing over and over again. And secondly, it's very important to get to know yourself. You know, you really need to learn healthy coping strategies in order to complete the stress cycle we've been talking about. Some small lifestyle changes with a focus on mindfulness, for example, can really help to do that. These hacks and tips are mostly helping you relax in the short term. You might complete your stress cycle and reduce the stress in your body for that moment. But that's just a sprint. As creators, we are playing the long game. We're running marathons. We're not here for the next three months. We're here for the next three to 10 years. And for that, you need a short-term safe, but also a long-term plan. Alan Thing put it this way, we need air. Let's take a nice deep breath in. Nice deep breath out. Aspiration, work on something that is connected to your heart's desire. Integration. How do we integrate work and life in balance? I'm gonna teach you a yoga pose called the tree pose. Notice my right knee. This is bent. This reminds us to build in flexibility into our everyday lives. Because when we're super busy at work, it's the flexibility at home that makes the integration possible. When we have emergencies at home, it's the flexibility at work that makes the integration possible. Rejuvenation. Recharge yourself and dare to take breaks. Make it intentional. Treat yourself like your phone. A mini charge during the day, which equals to five minutes of meditation or walking, something that you can use to recharge 20% of your internal battery. A full charge during the night, equals just plugging in and doing a deep rest for at least seven to nine hours a day. And once in a while, you need an operating system upgrade. Get off the grid, experience new things, and recharge your creative battery. Just get in touch with yourself, because if that part is missing, chances or on relapse are way too high. But maybe even the most important thing is get help. Don't do it by yourself. You don't have to do it by yourself. There is professional help which can help you getting a helicopter view. Therapists or psychologists, they have a neutral view. They have a professional background which can help you to overcome this thing. Like I said, I'm, I'm not at a stage of burnout yet, but that doesn't take away that something felt like it was missing for a while now. For the past few years, I've been only making content about making content. In a way, it felt lacking depth and it felt lacking focus. So I decided to go back to the drawing board and start fresh, start at zero, where we all start as creators. This channel is a continuation of Tom's Odyssey, but also what you know as the podcast. It's a show by and for creators where I'm trying to have a hub for aspiring new creators, new creatives to find their way and find their voice on the internet. And secondly, this is the puzzle that took me almost an entire decade to complete. It's nowhere to be finished, but it's already so exciting to me. And that's a new channel called Tom's Plan B. This channel is focused on climate change and all the ways that we need to figure out to get out of it. As a marine biologist, a, a filmmaker, a photographer, I think this is gonna be my most ambitious project yet. But I had to start with my aspirations to work on something that gives me energy, not on something that drains it out of existence. One of the creators who inspired me to make this video is Matt Diavella. And in this video, you can see my breakdown of how he makes his videos. For the change makers among us, I made this video about plastic pollution in Albania. This marks the beginning of my new filmmaking career and it's freaking me out. But I'm also excited about this. See you on the other side of one of these guys.